Number 41. Consider the orbitals shown here in outline. And then they give us x, y, and z, and then we have a through e. So a, what is the maximum number of electrons contained in an orbital of type x, or type y, or type z? Okay, so I'm just going to say that let's letter this a, b, c, d down here, and e over here. Okay. So we want the max number of electrons contained in any specific orbital, no matter whether it's x, y, or z. So no matter what it is, any orbital can only allow a max of two electrons, right? Because the ms can either be a plus one half or minus one half. So technically, there can only be a max of two electrons spinning in the positive direction, plus one half, and spinning in the negative direction, minus one half. So any orbital, it does not matter which one it is, there can only be a max of two electrons per orbital. So since all of these, x, y, and z, since all of them are representing one orbital, you could only fit a max of two electrons in each one. So for type X, you could only have two electrons. For type Y, you could only have two electrons, maximum. And then for type Z, you could only have a max of two electrons. There's no discrepancy between the differences in how many electrons you can maximally put in an orbital, no matter what the orbital is. So that's the answer to A. They all should have a max of two electrons. Letter B. How many orbitals of type X are found in a shell with n equals 2? How many type, how many for type Y, and how many of type Z? Okay, so now we have to figure out what these are, right? Now, basically, what X, Y, and Z are, they're just showing different shapes, right? And what number, what quantum number is designated to showing you what the shape of the subshell is. It is L, the angular momentum. So technically, for all of these, you should know what the L value is. Now, just know that circular subshells in X is always a subshell of an S orbital. So this is an S orbital or an S subshell, whatever you want to call it. I'll just put the S over here. If you have bidimensionality, so things in two dimensions, either going to the side or up and down or kind of back to front, this is always a P subshell, which has P orbitals. Z, if you have four ways, this would be a D. So get to know what they look like. S's are always circles. P's will always have two dumbbells or two balloons, and then usually anything greater than that, your professor or teacher usually gives you D's. They really won't give you F values. So this would be a D. But now, what does the S, P, and D stand for in terms of L? Well, remember we did a chart before, and you guys should memorize that chart. I'll put it up here. L value equates to subshell. And you can start with an L value of zero and go up until technically, you know, uh, infinity minus one. But let's just go from zero, one, two, and three here. If you have an L value of zero, it is an S subshell, followed by one is a P, two is a D, and three is a F. So since we know that this is a S subshell, we know that the L is equal to zero. Since this one is a P for Y, this L equals one. And then since this is a D, we know that this L equals two. Now they wanna know how many orbitals of the type are found in a shell with N equals two. So I'm going to put over here X, Y, and Z, but we have to do some math. They gave us an N equals two, which means that we should be able to tell what the L value is. What's the formula to find an L value? It's always from zero up until N minus one. 
And since the n was 2, I can just put the 2 into here and solve for all the l values in my shell of 2. So l should be 0 up until 2 minus 1, which is just 1. So technically, l should be 0 and 1. So that only represents, if you have a shell of 2, you're only allowed a L of 0, which means that you're only allowed an S orbital, and you're only allowed a P orbital. You are not allowed a D orbital. So automatically, since we know that D is for Z, this is 0. Now we just have to figure out how many orbitals are in an S and a P. Well, that comes from the... Um, the ML values. So you have to do for both. You have to do it for zero and you have to do it for one. So if I take my L equals zero, what's my ML value? My ML is always from negative L all the way to positive L. So technically this would be negative zero all the way to positive zero, but that really doesn't make any sense. ML would just be zero and it's one number. So how many orbitals are found in an S orbital? Because that's what Z, sorry, that's what L equals zero means. There would only be one orbital. So X, which is the S one, has to have only one orbital. Now we have to do it again for L equals one. So if L equals one, ML would technically be negative one all the way to positive one. Well, that incorporates negative one zero and plus one. So how many total orbitals are found in a P orbital because L equals one is a P orbital? Oh, there's three because there's three numbers here. So for the Y, which was the P, there should be three orbitals. So that's how you get the answer for B. Now, will these numbers ever change? Will you always have one orbital for an S, three orbitals for a P? In an n equals 2? Yes, every single time, 100% of the time. So once you get familiar with this, the answers will never change. So you can start memorizing um, some of this stuff and it kind of make it a little easier for you. So B is done. Now we have to move on to C. They say, write a set of quantum numbers for an electron in an orbital of X type or type X in a shell with n equals 4. Okay. And then they say of an orbital of type Y in a shell with N equals 2, but we'll, we'll get that in two seconds. Let's first worry about type X. So I'm just going to put over here X. And they want a shell of N equals 4. Now, usually when you write your quantum numbers, you always write them in progression of N, L, M, L, M, S. So you always start with the N and work your way down, but you have to hit all four. And they want it for n equals 4. So you have to start off with 4 because that's what they gave you. So it'd be 4, comma. Now it's type S. So type S, we said an L has to be equal to 0. No exceptions. So the next number has to be 0. Then you got to keep going. The ML. And we did that calculation right here for L equals 0, which was the S we found out that the ML is always one number for S, so that has to be a zero. And now, the MS, which is the spin, and I wrote that in the top right corner. You could either be a plus half, or you could either be a negative half. They didn't specifically say, but so you gotta pick one of them. So in this case, your answers can deviate from the textbook or from your classmates. One of you could put one half, the other one could put minus one half, and you would both be correct. So that would be the answer for x for the quantum numbers for n equals 4. Now, let's try the next part. The next part says, of an orbital of type y in a shell with n equals 2. So, here comes y. They tell us n equals 2. n is the first letter. So, you got to start with 2. Now, for y, they're telling you that y was a p, right? P is always equal to an L of 1. So that never, uh, you know, changes. So this has to be a 1 because we are a P for type Y. Now comes the ML. 
So we did that calculation before, right? It was over here. For L equals 1, which was a P, the ML could be from a negative 1 to a positive 1. You have three choices. You could have a 1, you could have a 0, and you could have a plus 1. Does it really matter which one you pick? Absolutely not. Any one of these three is correct. So if you put a 1 here, that's perfect. If you put a 0 or if you put a negative 1, all three of them would be the correct answer. I'm just going to stick with 1. It, it doesn't matter. You could have picked 0, whatever. But then last but not least comes the MS, and the electron could either be, be spinning, uh, you know, going north or going south. So once again, I'll just put the 1 half, but you could put a minus half. Either one would be correct. And that's the answer for the Y part for part C. And now let's finish it out. The, the third part says of the orbital of type Z in a shell with N equals 3. So for Z, they tell you N equals 3. N is the first number. So 3, comma. Well, we figured out that Z was a D orbital and L equals 2. So that has to be a 2. Now let's try to figure out the ML for an L with 2. So I will put that... I guess I'll put that down here, and then I'll just shift D and E over. So if we have an L of 2, which is the D orbital, every single time, the ML would be from negative 2 all the way to positive 2. So from here, you got five numbers, because you could have negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. You could pick any one of them. If you put a negative 2 here, great. If you put a negative 1 here, great. If you put 0... Perfect. It doesn't matter. I'm going to put a zero just because, but you could put any one of these five numbers, negative one, negative zero, sorry, negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. And then goes the MS again, positive a half or negative a half. It doesn't matter. So maybe this time I'll pick a negative one half, but it doesn't matter. You just had to write a set of quantum numbers and that's the answer for C. So now I'm just going to move D over here. And now D says, what is the smallest possible n value for an orbital of type X or type Y or type Z? Okay, so we want the smallest number. So we could do this by formula because remember, an L value will always be zero up until n minus one. And remember, n cannot be zero. It has to be either one or above. So n is basically equal to or greater than one. So I'm just going to say greater than or equal to one. So if I had an n equals one, the L value would be zero up until one minus one, which is zero. So I can have an L of zero in n equals one. It actually is the only number. And L equals zero is an S subshell. So that would actually be the lowest number for the n in type x. So for x, I'll put that over here. We'll do x, y, and z. So for type x, n equals 1 would be the lowest number. What do you think for z? What do you think for y and z? If we did the math, y would be an n equals 2. And then for z, it would be n equals 3, because look at the math here. If n equals 2, that means l would have to be from 0 all the way to n equals 1, and that's up until 1. And that's the first time that the 1 shows up, and the y was a p, l equals 1. And then for z, n equals 3, it would be l from 0 all the way up until 2, because 3 minus 1, and that's the first time a 2 shows up. So the lowest shell to find an S subshell is N equals 1 for X, N equals 2 for Y for a P, and N equals 3 for a Z, which is a D orbital. So that answers D. And then last but not least, it says, what are the possible L and ML values for an orbital of type X or type Y or type Z? We kind of answered these already. Let me see. Okay, so my E was right here. I'm just going to erase it, and let's put it somewhere else. I guess we'll put it over here. We have room. Okay, so I'm going to the top left, kind of. 
So for type X, the L value we already said was zero, and the ML has to be zero. For Y, we said that the L was one, and the ML, we did this calculation. It's negative L all the way to positive L. So it'd be negative one, zero, and plus one. And then for Z, it's a D orbital, which means that L equals two. So then the ML would be negative two, negative one, zero, plus one, and plus two. And that's that. So we kind of already did E with doing all the other ones. But I hope this makes sense. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. This is probably one of the most challenging topics for students because it's just kind of dealing with numbers and trying to see stuff in space. So let me, let me know what you guys think. Love to hear from you guys. Um, if you want to help the channel out and get the word out to other students that may be in your school or college, hit the subscribe button. That would help us out a lot. I will see you all in number 42. Have an awesome day.